This is 3 News Now, your daily update on everything Northeast Ohio with Stephanie Haney. Hello everyone on this Monday, July 25th. I'm Stephanie Haney. Welcome back to 3 News Now. Thank you for joining me here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Here on 3 News Now, we bring you the stories that matter most to you here in Northeast Ohio. These are the stories that you are clicking on, reading and sharing from our website and from our app. And we start today with sad news because actor Paul Servino has passed away. Now, this actor, very well known for playing crooks and cops, one of his most well known parts, playing Polly Cicero in Goodfellas, and also an NYPD Sergeant Phil Serretta on Law and Order. He has passed away at the age of 83. Now, we do have a Cleveland connection to Paul Servino. He was in the 2011 movie Kill the Irishman, which is about Danny Green. And Danny Green is an Irish American mobster, an associate of the Cleveland mobster John Nardi. That was during the 1970s gang war for the city's crime operations. At that time, competing gangsters set off more than 36 bombs, giving Cleveland a sort of nickname at the time for Bomb City, USA. So in that movie, Paul played Tony Salerno, also known as Fat Tony. This was the underboss and the front boss of the Genovese crime family in New York City. And according to the movie, Tony helped out with eventually killing Danny Green. What we know about Paul Servino's death comes from his publicist, Roger Neal, who said that he died this morning in Indiana of natural causes. For more on Paul Sor Sorvino's storied acting career, you can find that on WKYC.com. Now today, the trial has begun for the woman charged with killing Cleveland police officer Shane Bartek. The trial for Tamara McLeod, who is 18 years old and is charged with murder, began today with jury selection. The trial will be taking place before Judge John O'Donnell in the Cuyahoga County Court of Common Pleas. McLeod has been in custody for months since her arrest in the New Year's Eve shooting death of Officer Bartek. She's pleaded not guilty to multiple charges, including aggravated murder, murder and aggravated robbery, among others. It was determined earlier this year that the prosecutor's office will not be seeking the death penalty against McBloyd. As a reminder, Officer Bartek, who's 24 years, 25 years old, excuse me, was shot in the parking lot of an apartment complex on Rocky River Drive. It happened about 6 p.m. on December 31st. He was a two-year veteran with the Cleveland Police Department. He was laid to rest at Holy Cross Cemetery in January. Another trial underway. Jury selection started Friday for the excessive force case of Euclid police officer Michael Amiot. And now opening statements came today. So Amiot is charged with two counts of assault and one count of interfering with civil rights. This is connection with a violent traffic stop in August of 2017. So long time coming for this trial to finally be underway. Video taken from a cell phone shows, an, shows the officer punching Richard Hubbard repeatedly after Hubbard was pulled over for a moving violation. Video played in the courtroom today while Hubbard was questioned on the win witness stand and he described what happened in the video. Hubbard said that he was on the ground, that he hops, that the officer hops up and starts slamming his head on the ground, and he doesn't know why he did that. He said his girlfriend got out of the car and started screaming, and Hubbard said that he wasn't fighting back, that he never touched the officer, that he never even brought his fists up at the officer. He protected his face from the punches, he said, but you can't see that in the video. He said, uh, in the conclusion of his comments that a traffic stop just turned into him getting beat up for no reason. And we did stream the opening statements live. You can watch those on WKYC.com. Now a turn to uh, some information for people who might be looking for new work. The United States Postal Service is hiring for more than 300 jobs in the Cleveland area, some of them paying up to almost $28 per hour. So what they'll be having is a drive through job fair that'll be at the USPS Cleveland Administrative Building. That is on Orange Avenue. That'll be on Sunday, July 31st from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. That exact address is 2200 Orange Avenue if you're interested in going. The jobs range from mail handler assistant, which is $17.32 an hour, to automotive technician, which is $27.52 per hour. There will be representatives from the U.S. Postal Service on site to give detailed information about the positions and answer questions, and you can file your application online. We have that link on WKYC.com. 
Now let's talk a little bit of basketball. We are well into the NBA offseason, and the Cavaliers and Colin Sexton have yet to reach a deal. There is mutual interest in him signing a long-term contract, but it doesn't seem like an agreement will be reached anytime soon. This is according to The Athletic, that negotiations with Sexton could last into the team's training camp in September, if not later. So here's the hang-up. The Cavs' negotiations with Sexton seem to be a uh, little hung up on the fact because he's a restricted free agent. So Cleveland has the ability to match any offer that Sexton might receive. So as a result of that, potential teams that might be interested might be hesitant to offer him a deal because they know the Cavs could simply match the deal. Also, at this point in the offseason, potential teams are limited. There are only three teams that seem to have the, the enough cap, cap space to strike a deal to get Sexton. That's the Indiana Pacers, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Detroit Pistons. So as a result, unless Sexton and Cleveland reach an agreement, it might make the most sense for him to sign a one-year, $7.2 million qualifying offer and become an unrestricted free agent next offseason. And then that stipulation won't be in place about the matching offer. Now let's talk about uh, something that might be very interesting for the city of Amherst. There, were, there is a vote coming from the city of Anhurst's city council on designating an outdoor refreshment area. It's called Dora. This is according to the Illyrical, Illyria, excuse me, the Illyria Chronicle Telegram. It's a real mouthful for me today. So according to the Illyria Chronicle Telegram, if approved, people would be able to walk from bar to bar in the city's historic downtown district with alcoholic beverages in their hands. That's during festivals and other events that are pre-approved by the mayor or the safety services director. And there are lots of other places in town that have these Doras in place, designated outdoor refreshment areas. Toledo has one. The city of Lorraine has one, but they don't have date restrictions like the ones being proposed by Amherst. So that city council meeting is scheduled for 7 p.m. tonight, and we will see what happens with that vote. Another area of town to keep your eye on is Midtown. Midtown is an intersection of several different neighborhoods near downtown Cleveland. It's where Asia Town, Huff, Central, Fairfax, and downtown intersect, and it's called Midtown. Now, a lot of people have experienced Midtown as sort of a drive-through destination, driving through from the east side to downtown, for example. But the goal is there's a five-year plan to really make this a destination community. Richard Barga, who's the managing director of Midtown Cleveland, talked about that. He says that there are amazing, amazing projects happening over a hundred million dollar direct investment into that neighborhood. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. And the goal is for it to really be to become a destination for people to experience and enjoy Midtown over the next five years. One more thing to let you know before we go here, we have to send congratulations to our very own Austin Love who married a beautiful bride on Saturday. Congratulations to Austin and Allison on their wedding over the weekend. Many of the GO team were there. It was a beautiful black tie event. You can see those pictures and see them celebrate their special day. That's on WKYC.com. All right, that's it for your 3 News Now update today for Monday, July 25th. I will see you back here tomorrow with more 3 News Now. Thanks for listening to 3 News Now with Stephanie Haney from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now so you never miss an update and find more on everything you heard here on WKYC.com and in the WKYC app.